Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, today we have the definition of a COVID episode. Whoa! Mm. We do. We First do. proper one, I guess you could say. Yeah, totally. We've had to do like a couple where we've been in very brief lockdowns and stuff, but nothing. This is the like most COVID thing that's happened to to me. Um, yeah. Which is, uh, I was a close contact, so I'm in isolation for for a week, which obviously is nothing compared to what uh you folks in the uk have, have had to do and, and stuff like that um but it is it is weird and it is um more more challenging than i thought today i was good yesterday was a was a bad mental health day you know i was like kind of yeah just alone and was like fuck just get me out of this house you know are you so are you like and all your, your both your parents are in the same boat as you well my parents are on holiday oh okay wait oh shit so it is just you in the house just hanging out i didn't know that okay okay they were All here right. for a couple so, of days early on but uh no they're, they're gone now so um fuck. yeah well um you you can clarify your you've had negative tests multiple negative tests so yeah should, so it's okay you, you're out tomorrow is that correct yeah i should be out tomorrow so that's good i did uh Unless something happens again <laughs> i did two rats tests and they both came back negative which yeah. is good and then i went for a pcr yesterday Got that back today and it's still all good. That's an amazing mug, Connor. Um, but I do have, you'll probably hear it. I do have a bit of a cough um, that I've developed just like sort of today. So oh, I'm boy. like, I'll do one more rap tomorrow. Um, yeah, just, just to be, be safe. safe. Um, and then, yeah. And then we'll take it from there, but it should be fine. Um, yeah. Well, it's gone. Um, we went from having like, there was a time last year and we had like no community cases for like eight months. And yeah. That's not even like an exaggeration. That's literally what it was like. Yeah. Um, and now it's like, now it's here after like two years. Like now it's properly here. Like we're getting yeah. like 600 cases a day, which is completely unheard. We used to get like a case a day. When there was a lockdown, we'd maybe get one or two cases a day. Now we're getting about, and that's what they know of. So yeah, it's definitely here now. It's here to stay. Yeah. Um, just to, so, just to fill everyone yeah. in, we'll, we'll, we'll be brief with it. Cause I don't think, I think everyone's sick mm. of hearing COVID talk, but um, mm. for us, it's just a bit more real and different now because um our state in australia western australia um just like shut it shut itself off from the rest of the world for literally like two years um and so till march 5th till march 5th um but you know in that time we've managed to get everyone double and and like i think 50 percent of the population triple vaxxed and stuff like that um are you triple vaxxed mm-hmm. i'm triple vaxxed no not yet no i no. think i've got mine coming up in a couple of weeks oh no yeah, next cool. week or something like that. yeah yeah um and so now that COVID is in where it's like finally in and it, this has sort of just been the last like two or three weeks so we're up to about 600 cases a day and it's going to jump up to a thousand any day now i know it um yeah but you know it's shit but it's it, it's what was going to happen you know we, we've done the preparation so now i guess it's a thing of letting all these hard borders and shit pay off and and we'll see how that goes crazy stuff that guy that subbed to us and then immediately on sub when we started talking about vaccines he's probably fuming right now <laughs> <laughs> oh god yeah yeah he, yeah i made a joke uh about novak Djokovic. i don't know here's the thing i was like should i make this joke i thought about it in the day and i was like should i make it um and i did and it upset someone so i made i did make a little i made i just dropped a video today actually on the fifty doctor channel um i did put another joke in there but i i got rid of it because i was like oh my why am i making jokes about fucking covid in a doctor who video mm-hmm. my joke was basically saying like because of the I, there was like the infection. I don't know if you've seen the video yet, but I talk about like the anti child and stuff and the infection in the mm. in the episode. I'm like, it's kind of like the coronavirus, but I was like, oh, fuck it, I'll take that out. Cause I'm like, clearly people just don't want to hear about it. I was like, fair enough. It was a quick little joke, but yeah. Well, like, I think it was, I think we they were an anti vaxxer from what I, from, uh, what I, yeah, I think so. I, look, yeah, I, I ain't here to like fucking, uh, I just want to make videos about Doctor Who. I, I decided to make a little joke and I, I kept it in um, and uh, I clearly pissed someone off. So I was like, okay, <laughs> fuck it. Like, look, I, not, not that I agree with him, but I, I, I think I learned a lesson in the fact that I'm like, why am I making these jokes um, in a video where people probably just want to escape that shit and just talk, think about Doctor Who? I'm not yeah. saying he was right for saying that. I'm just saying maybe other people thought that too. So I was like, but also, yeah get vaccinated you know. uh, <laughs> yeah yeah there you um, go watch that come and bite me in the ass uh yeah. guys today <laughs> we are rattling on with our classic who reviews going through classic month 
We are three out of five stories there today. We're going to be talking about Earthshock. That's the season 19 story with Peter Davison. So if you haven't watched it and you're about to step into Classic Who, then go over, watch it, and then come back and listen to us. We won't talk about COVID again. Well, we might do. I don't know, but probably not. <laughs> we might. Um, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, crazy stuff. A little bit of housekeeping. Um, you know, we're the 50% Doctor Who podcast where we usually review New Who as we, as we rattle on through. Um, but we're currently doing a little bit of Classic Who, doing a little bit of filler, a little bit of different stuff talking about them classic who getting connor into classic who before we review the day of the doctor for our 100th episode in like three or four weeks time crazy or a month however which is four weeks i don't even know what i'm saying anymore uh, but no, you can find us on twitter weeks. and instagram at 50 doctor you can watch the footage over on youtube at the 50 percent doctor who podcast youtube channel connor has just dropped a bonus video there so every now and then you get little bonus nuggets of videos from us and it'll so be lovely yeah so we're filming this on the 24th which is when it drops so when this episode comes out, it will be out. So you can watch it, maybe like. Right now. Oh, sorry. I thought you said maybe like, <laughs> not whenever you like. So I was like, what, uh, whenever you maybe like. like what? Uh, yeah, whenever you like. Cool. Lovely. And it's about scary. What the scariest Doctor Who episode, right? Mm-hmm. That's lovely. Yeah. So tune in that to see Connor shit his pants. Pretty Woo! much. That's the, that's the description of the video. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah that's lovely i think that's everything and you can find us on spotify and apple podcasts and all of that stuff you can send us your reviews for the episodes that we talk about all that kind of stuff over on the socials like i said at 50 doctor i also just uh, released a short film on youtube choices as my final student short film i saw that that was but if you want to go check it out do feel free to um you can you, um, find it linked on my twitter on my instagram on... what was that sorry did you did you plan on doing that today or did you just round me think i'll just do it I just randomly like this uh being in isolation has just been me trying to figure out it's been me doing the jobs that i've been like oh i need to do that at some point and and so this was one of those yeah. things because um i had to cut a few things differently in it um a few things we changed and stuff like that um mm. so it was it was a bit of a process but we got there um and as always i had to export it like three times before it was the right that before i did it properly because i'm a fucking idiot basically yeah um, yeah i always do that sometimes i'm just like you export it and then you watch the video and you're like fuck's sake and you have yeah. to do it yeah yeah it's mad no nah, awesome man congrats that's that's great stuff thank you it's very it's very studenty and it's like a it's a dystopian film though um but uh i think it's got legs and i think uh, for where i was as a filmmaker at the time which is about uh, a year and a half ago i think it uh, mm-hmm. i think it holds up so yeah i'll check yeah. it out i'll check it out bang bang we love and it so should you yeah that's right you should too if you like movies that are short <laughs> you like uh, short films 50 percent podcast baby let's do it 50 50 50 50 50 50 50 50 50 percent pop 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 cat 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 earth shock is a sixth serial of the 19th season of the british science fiction television series dog two which was first broadcast in four twice weekly parts on bbc one from the eighth to the 16th of March, 1982. The serial marks the final regular appearance of Matthew Waterhouse as Adric and his climactic death with the final episode featuring unique silent credits in memory of the character. It is also the first to feature the Cybermen since Revenge of the Cybermen in 1975. So that's uh, seven years since the last Cybermen story. Um, And the other thing, I don't know if you picked up when I read that then, Connor, um, is that this aired two episodes a week. Right. Yeah, we spoke about that, I think... um last week when i was like yeah i wondered because with the whole four episode format i i wondered if like it was yeah uh, almost like maybe day by day or week by week or yeah m- most week, of the time so. it was week by week but i i think they went through a couple of little periods where they did two a week um okay there you go. okay interesting Madness. Right. um earth shock i rem- okay this is actually kind of interesting for me um i i i think i may be combining a few memories here but uh, so obviously series one of Doctor Who, the revival came out in 2005. Um, and then after that season is when me and my family moved to Australia. And I remember one of the first like two or three days that we were in Australia, it was raining, it just pissed down all day, every day. Um, and I was having dinner and then all, I, all of a sudden I hear this. And dad's like, oh, Aiden, this is, uh, this is like the old version of Doctor Who. And when I came out and it was the Peter Davison title sequence. Um, and I, I, for some reason, feel like Earthshock was the episode that was playing. But I, I actually don't, I think that's a wrong, I think that's a false memory. I think it was okay. an episode that involved 
people running away from there was like a, like a bit of lava on the floor or something and i think it had that ginger companion so it was a peter davison episode um but but later on in, in his run i've not seen it um since but but yeah so this this title sequence is definitely my most nostalgic classic sequence and probably one of my favorite title sequences just in general did you like the title sequence oh man yeah it's, it's different and um it's like very, very 80s, isn't it? Very, it's like, uh, very. it's so cool. Um, and it's not even like those, like, it's not even like Stranger Things, or I know it's uh, like uh, Taika Waititi's four movies do a similar thing. It's not even like that, where it's like, you know, current era trying to replicate it. Like, that's this is like OG shit. Yeah. Yeah. I thought it was, I thought it was really awesome. And they even, they even show his face in the, uh, in the end credits as well. Yeah. Which, which is not in, um, well, you know, I haven't watched a lot of classics, but from what I have seen yeah, so far. Um, I have a similar kind of story with my yeah. childhood with, with Earthshot because I, my, my nanny used to collect, um, they did this thing. Don't say it. I know what you're going to say. I know what you're going to say. What, where they had the one episodes in like, the little the sun. sun DVDs? Yeah. Yes. I still have mine. Yeah, somewhere. same. Yeah, I've got, I think I got them off in this uh, shelf up there. I, yeah. They had Earthshot on mm-hmm. it. And I, I watched it when I was younger and I was like, what is this shit? So I just, <laughs> I never yeah, that was me. Back. Um, but I really appreciate my nan giving me them. I still got them. I have heat like, I had one of um I think it's for I think I have five. I think they did one for every doctor. And I think it was mm. just before Rose started um Rose started Aaron, I think. Or something no, I think it was I think then. um it was after that because it, after series one, Maybe. they did a couple of single episodes from from series one, I think. Or maybe it was after series two and they did a few from series one and a few from series two. And then I think maybe. they went back and did some classic stories on the single disc. Um, and then they did season three. I don't think they ever did it for season four, but yeah, I have so okay. many of them and I have the earth shock one as well. Yeah. I have the only, that's it. And then the only other classic episode I own on DVD is Genesis of the Daleks. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. that's, and I think, I think my, um, my auntie got it for me once just because i said i wanted to get into them and, and again i think i watched like one episode and then never touched it again so <laughs> yeah i got a little bit of a story of shock as well but um always wanted to watch it had you i can't remember when i was watching it i couldn't remember if you'd seen it or not you'd seen it already i've seen Earthshock. this is like probably the fifth time i've seen Earthshock. oh um, shit okay all right yeah. I, for some reason i had my memory of you saying that you hadn't seen it but okay all right no no, no. all the ones all of these that i've i've I'm showing you I've seen it was just um City of Death I'd only seen recently. Um okay. Yeah. Well it's it's this is if correct me if I'm wrong, but this is like probably one of the biggest classic episodes. Yeah, this this is huge. It's definitely um I think when people talk about Peter Davison episodes, they talk about Earth Shock and they talk about the Caves of Androzani. Um and I guess the five doctors if you want to count. And that's them. the highest rated episode, isn't it technically? The Caves, Caves of Androzani. I think it might be, yeah. There's that picture of Peter Davison sticking his little finger up when it says like and seeking it like a records for the <laughs> yeah yeah you know, Peter yeah. I sent in a group chat yeah, recently yeah, yeah, where it's like that. yeah it's like the highest rated episode apparently hmm. yeah um it's really okay. uh, look I think I've seen Kids of Andazani and I think I really enjoyed it but it was years okay. ago um and I have no recollection of anything that happens in it so I, I cannot yeah, comment okay. on, on it okay. um, but no yeah Earth Earthshock is cool this is the third classic story that Connor has sat down and properly invested himself in for it um, Correct. I picked it because I knew you wanted to watch it. Um, yeah. I thought it would be good to give you a Sideman story. And I thought uh, the, the Adric death at the end is a big moment for Doctor Who. So the first time anything like this has ever happened in the show. And um, I also thought that, you know, with you being a modern Doctor Who fan and the companion exits are always so dramatic in modern Who, I was mm. like, there's a chance that you'll, you might like that as well. Um, so what did you think of Earthshot, Connor? Yeah, I, I really liked it. I enjoy the last two parts a lot more i feel like i have this thing with with classic who where i am a rookie um i'm not used to the storytelling um you know techniques as much as like you probably you are um so i do find myself normally the first part most and maybe around the second part maybe not not near the end of the second part but maybe halfway through the first bit of the second part i'm like you know what's going on where is this going what is going on um but i feel like i always get a good i always feel like i get a good uh, resolution tool um and yeah i definitely really love the last few parts i thought the last few parts were really great um 
apart from a few things here and there, I I really enjoyed it. But I, I feel like again, I said this last week as well. I'm gonna sound like a broken record, but I don't I don't research the plots or I need a side memory in it, but I don't research the plots. I don't I don't, you know, do any of that. So I can go in and be like with a fresh, like a refreshed mind of the episodes. So um so far, none of these episodes have gone the way I thought they would, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. But sometimes that can take me a bit out of the episode for a little bit. But it was really, it was a really fun watch, actually. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Um, yeah, so as always, as we do these classic episodes, uh, we'll talk about them a little bit differently. Um, so, yeah, let's just talk about the story. It's uh, relatively simple. You start with that amazing location work outside the mines. Um, oh, maybe, yeah. Which, yeah, once again, looked amazing on Blu-ray. Um, and then, you know, they go into the mines and the Cybermen, fucking some shit happens onto the spaceship. The Cybermen are hijacking the spaceship because um, they want to go and like basically kamikaze into an Earth conference. That's like a big conference of all the federations of the universe and stuff as like a bit mm-hmm. of a political statement, I guess. A bit of a fuck you, we're the Cybermen and we're here to fuck shit up kind of thing. Um, and, uh, and ever on a bots mission, uh, the ship travels back in time, ends up being the meteorite that blows up the dinosaurs and Man, that was great. is, is still on board. Big sad to Adric. He'd never know if he was right. That's a great line. And also that ending was great. I, I not even just Adric's death, which I thought was really bold. Um, the way they set up the dinosaurs at the, at the beginning, I was completely totally. like, I, I didn't see that coming at all. I thought mm. that was an awesome, um, like it just looped around at the start. That was, that was great. I really, that really took my surprise. I thought it was really clever and I really liked that. So, I mean, obviously, yeah, it's like earth blowing up. You're always like, oh, fucking, that's not going to happen. But it mm. did happen. Yeah. Like it actually did. It's just not in the timeline that it was supposed to. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm a big fan of the story. I think, um, yeah, I think maybe it, it uh, what's the word? Like, I, I don't know. It, it's a little backwards and forwards at the start. There's a lot of characters. Um, so things move slow, but the energy in the performances, and because there is so many characters there, you, I don't think you necessarily really notice. Um, and then that's the same, I think, for, for part four as well. Not a lot happens in part four. It's all building up to that climax, which is great um, and it's excellent. But um, I was literally like um, looking at the the runtime of the Blu-ray, and there was like a good like seven or eight minute point where I was like, genuinely, nothing in the plot has advanced in this seven or eight minutes. It's just the Cybermen like killing shit. Um, everyone being like, we need to get Adric. We need to get Adric. Adric being like, yes, the next logic thing. I've done it. Um, and then the Cybermen saying shit to each other. Um, it's all super enjoyable, but um, yeah, it doesn't really go anywhere plot wise but i think it's all there to build to a really emotional climax and a hard-hitting climax i think yeah totally um yeah part of me was also like you know like not not like i didn't enjoy it i was just like okay this is so this is earth shot like this is what everyone's been talking about mm-hmm. and again it did take me by surprise of the you know in, in points that the plot was a bit you know simplistic but there's nothing wrong with that um, yeah. I guess obviously when you've heard so much about something, you definitely go in with a bit of a an idea about what you think is gonna happen, despite not having any knowledge of the episode, which I didn't. Yeah. Um, totally. And it took me by surprise a little bit. And yeah, definitely the first part was my least favorite because of what you said just then, like, you know, I felt like there was a lot of characters that just, you know, didn't you know, I was like, what the fuck's going on here? Like, how's this all add up? And like literally the reason why the doctor even goes into the chaos because he's having an argument with Adric. Adric wants to go home. And he's like, I want to go take a walk. And then for some reason he lands in a cave and is like, okay, let's go, let's go for a walk down here. It's like, this is lit. And then yeah. that's, that's how it starts. I'm like, okay. Like, I think it starts really great though, with the whole um, Adric and the doctor, like not getting along. It's cool to see like a TARDIS bedroom and they're having a chat in the, the TARDIS, TARDIS bedroom. bedroom. Yeah, that stuff's dude, awesome. That's mad. Yeah. 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 Um, and it, it felt like a good episode for Adric to leave on because it's very Adric centered and he gets loads of good moments with the doctor. When it's just him and the doctor like on the ship running around for a little bit, that stuff's great. And when the doctor has to like sort of shake his hand and say goodbye, that stuff's really great. So how long had Adric been was Adric with um 
Tom Baker's doctor for a little bit? He was with Tom. So basically in season 18, Tom Baker's last season, um, which is the season between what we just watched last week, City of Death, and season 17, then season 18, season 19 is, is Earthshock. Got Earthshock in it. Okay. Um, and so basically John Nathan Turner, a new producer, took over in season 18. Um, and so he wanted to sort of restart the show he kind of want not restart it he wanted to just you know relaunch it you know like a new era um so when tom said he was leaving john nathan turner was like no worries um, and okay. and so they got on peter davison and in the last like literally like the last like three or four stories of season 18 um romana leaves and then adric comes in one story uh i think nissa joins in the next story and then tegan joins in the final story and then they're the main sort of characters through this season um so Adric's wow. only a uh, companion for like just over a season, really, um, which is which is pretty interesting. Um, probably a shame for Matthew Waterhouse because he was a big fan of of Doctor Who. So when he got the part, he was like frothing. Um, but but yeah, so he's not been with a, a, a massive amount of time, and he is a bit of just a whiny kid, I think. When is, when you yeah. when you look at it, um, and yeah, him and the Doctor never really get along an awful lot. Which is which is an interesting dynamic, a bit of a weird one, I think. Yeah, um, as like people gotta remember, I'm not trying to be like I know these stories mean so much to so many people. You gotta understand that like, I'm I'm hopping in. I don't know who the fuck these characters are. I'm hopping <laughs> in random seasons. I'm getting a new doctor every time who I have to get used to. Mm. Um, so I'm not saying anyone's giving me shit, but I'm sure someone's not happy with what I'm saying. But um, yeah, he is whiny. Um, yeah. It is, he is. But I'd, I'd heard you say that, so I was kind of like, I always make jokes about Adric to you for some reason, and you're always like that whiny bitch. And I'm like, okay, like, <laughs> I guess I'll get, I guess I'll see one day what you're talking about. And um, yeah. I definitely think he gets better in the later episodes, like three and four. Yeah, he's um, not always whiny. It's just like he gets no. the odd episode here and there where his like, his character yeah. is just to whine. <laughs> yeah, he definitely had his moments in in um in episode one and two. But um, I definitely think that his 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 presence in the last two were really good, especially in the last mm. one. And yeah. um, I love his last line as well. It was really interesting. I, Adric's always just been a companion that I've known even before I've even watched any classic episodes, just because I've heard about his um, his death, which I believe I had watched on YouTube before. So mm. I had seen the scene before. I think I watched it maybe last year or something before I knew I was going to do this. So I had seen it before, but. That's why I knew of, of him and stuff. So, but it was yeah. it was cool to see him in action in the episode. You know what's really interesting about this four companion, uh, three companion, one doctor like team, is that yeah, it, it's the costume designs are so recognizable because they're like the only people they don't change costume whilst they're on the show. Adric's in the same costume for every episode. Um, so is right. Sarah Sutton as Nissa. Um, Jeanette, I think Fielding, whatever. Uh, Jeanette, uh, where is her name? Jeanette Fielding as as Tegan is always in the air hostess um, costume, and then obviously Peter Davison's costume is another kind of very iconic, very cricket stand out costume. You know, um, as a fan of cricket, I really appreciate it. Mm, okay, um, it's not very subtle. What a, what a fucking whack idea! Yeah, and the like, salary as well. And the yeah, you could see in a few shots the salary had gone like. Um, started to like decompose a bit, which made me laugh. This is um, in the back yeah. half of the season, so <laughs> that's uh, yeah, dude. What am I kind it's such a fucking weird? I remember when my dad told me that one of the doctors is dressed in cricket gear, and I expected him to come out and like the, like the stumps and like all the actual proper cricket <laughs> gear, but this is like it's like OG, like doesn't he, doesn't he play cricket in a few scenes as well? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, a story or two before this one, Black Orchard, it's just a two part story, it's, it's really short. Um, I actually found it really enjoyable. It's not the most loved by a lot of people, but I really enjoyed it. And like, I watched the extended cut of it. So the first part was about 30 minutes long, I think. Um, and I don't know if it's like this in the normal episode. This could have been where it was extended, but the cricket sequence is genuinely half the episode. And I was like, that's awesome. This quality is just playing cricket. Like episode. Um, can I say something quickly before I completely forget? Yeah, go on. Um, I meant to bring up last week. Um, I have the perfect comparison of a TV show, which I think fits classic Who perfectly. Mm -hmm. um, everyone's going to probably look at me backwards, but it's, every time I watch classic Who, I, I'm reminded of, um, of Tintin. And I used to read the Tintin comics when I was a kid. 
Um, and I love them. I love them so much. And then I got the DVD of the, um, they did the adventures on that DVD and stuff. And they'd be very similar to Doctor Who in the sense that they would do like a story and they'd split it over parts. Um, it, and it's like very much like classic Who, where it's like, it's just, it's different stories that are in different locations and different things. And Tintin would do stuff like, you know, um, there's like a, one of the last, one of the last stories, I think it's the second last story, is like completely set in like a mansion. And it's kind of similar to like we just said then about how like half the episode is like a cricket game. Um, yeah. When I watch it, I'm just reminded, I'm just reminded of it so much. Like all the different adventures that they do, it just, I can't be the only thing that have anyone watched it, watched it, uh, watched Tintin TV show when they were growing up or read the comics. Um, I find it I, oddly familiar. And I don't know why, because it's not, it's not really similar in a way, but I mm. think it's just all the different locations. It's all different adventures and, they're long form stories as well. They're not just like a single, like a couple pages, like they're, they're big, yeah. long comics. And the TV show would be like multiple parts as well. Well, at least where I was from, it was like multiple parts. Like there were long stories. Mm. Um, That's so very if similar anyone as out well there, to the, sorry? To, this is very similar as well to like the 2003 Ninja Turtles. I don't know if you ever watched that, but that- No, I haven't, no. They're like cartoon network Ninja Turtles around for like, I think five series. And then they made a few spinoffs or something. Um, right and it was sort of like uh i think the first four series are all pretty much like um like four part for like three to four part stories where the stories just go over a few parts and stuff and yeah and then you buy it the same way you used to be able to buy classic where you just buy the um individual story and it'll have the four episodes that make up that story in there um yeah which was cool and sometimes you get box sets with a few more in them I actually still have them all upstairs. Um, I love that as a kid. <laughs> yeah, I have my Tintin as well. Yeah, it's it's right. It's like it would like like those stories. Like it would have like an object that was stolen, and there's like the villain of the four episodes, and it would set it. It would like start off with, like new characters and stuff. But I know it's kind of similar to other TV shows, but there's something about it. And yeah, if anyone gets any of those two things, please let us know because mm-hmm. it's all I can think about. But um, but yeah, sorry, I forgot to bring out last week, and I. I keep kicking myself for not mentioning it, but yeah, I just remembered. Cool. So, so yeah, yeah, easy, banging. Um, okay, yeah. So, what did you think of Peter Davison as the Doctor? Yeah, great. I loved all the Doctors so far. Mm-hmm. Um, they're all so different, and even like we just spoke about them, the costume is just like so whack. Uh, he's his personality so far. Again, I'm just hopping into these episodes. This is my first full episode with him. I'm sort of struggling to, to put my finger on like what his doctor stands for but it's i've only seen sassy. four episodes very sassy um not as jokey at all as Troughton or tom baker mm-hmm. um definitely i'd say the seriousness of of john pertway i'd say and probably similar to the first and third doctor the most and, and again i haven't really seen much of the first or three so i don't want to start making comparisons that are going to annoy people but yeah. um i haven't seen much of him but he was an awesome doctor to watch um he I think he's my mum's favorite doctor as well. So really? I've always, I've always had like, I don't know, I've always just liked him. Um, I like his floppy blonde hair. That made me laugh. It's, <laughs> I just, it's really floppy. And even, even one of the side men's like comments on the doctor's floppy long hair, which I yeah. thought was funny. Um, so yeah, I haven't seen much of him. Very, I feel very similar to my idea for the first doctor. Where I feel like I, I haven't really gotten to know him very well, but. Mm. uh yeah you're right sassy and, and quite stern i even um i think the most i found out about his doctor was when i i chucked on the next episode real quick which i think it's called time flight yeah um because i was like i wonder if they're gonna address adric's death or they're just gonna like go into the next episode <laughs> and be like that never happened but i don't know if you've seen it you must hold have on seen it, but my doggy's out the window look how much is that doggy in the window yeah. do do the one with the waggy tail. Hello. Oh, come on. There she is. Come the on. hero of the podcast. Come on to the podcast. Good girl. Good girl. Yeah. Hey. Our special wow. Guest. I don't wow, think I podcast with Jem. The man can't hear me. He's putting in his headphones. I can hear you now. Hello. Jem, say hello to, to everyone. Welcome to the show. She's like, Big help me, please. Help me. <laughs> you okay come on i'll put you down good girl Jeremy's joining us for the show there we go good girl 
This is why you watch the videos, folks. Yeah, so you get a little gem cameo. She loved that. Yeah, the, the gem cam. The gem cam. That's it. Gem um, cam. <laughs> sorry, uh, what were you saying? We're talking about Peter Davison. Um, yeah, so I was just saying how um, I finished watching Earthshock and then I chucked on Time Flight, which is the next episode. And I was like, I wonder if they'll address Adric's death. And I was just saying, this is how I think, this is how I found out the most about what would, what Pete does and stuff and stands for, mm. is that there's like a two minute scene in the next episode where they address Adric's death. So I was like, are they going to address it? And basically the two companions are trying to convince the doctor to like go back in time and save him real quick. Um, and like for a split second, he, he uh, kind of almost wants to do it and then decides not to. And he basically just says, like, you know, we're all Miss Adric, but he had a great life and he made his decision to stay on the platform. Mm. And now he's dead and we need to move on with our lives. And basically just says, I'm going to take you somewhere nice now. Take your minds off it. And I think I learned more about his doctor in that little scene than I did yeah. throughout Earthshock. But I think this is an episode where, like, basically they're probably just like, oh, you're new, you know what his doctor stands for now. Let's do like a big bombastic episode where the Cybermen attack and, um, yeah, so I didn't really find out much about his doc, in my opinion. But that it is interesting thing, that you oh, mentioned Time did. Flight because Time Flight yeah. is the last story in the series in the season, um, and it is I'm pretty sure voted the worst or one of the worst. It's like bottom five really? of the barrel of all of Doctor Who. Um, it's really? not good. It's really bad. Yeah. I saw it start and it's like a plane and I was like, this is kind of cool. Yeah, it's the Concord. Um, yeah, I was like, this looks really cool. Um, mm-hmm. But I was just skipping, I didn't watch anything of it. I was just skipping to see the first scene with the TARDIS crew because I was like, I was generally so interested to see if they would address Adric or if they would, the episode would just start and it would just be like, that's that happened and they don't mention yeah. it. But um, yeah, I love, I love his costume the most as yeah. a cricket fan. <laughs> um, okay, so we talked about Adric, we talked about the Doctor. What did you think of Nissa? Josh Snares yes. Nissa. Josh Snares' favorite character. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I could think about. Um, yeah. Man, it's hard. I, I feel like I can't really say much about these characters because I don't want to upset anybody. I don't know much about them. From She's not in it I much. Saw, Her uh, yeah, yeah, again, and I can't fault that because I'm sure they've had um, heaps of backstory, which I've just not seen. Um, but... I thought, yeah, I thought she was really cool. It's, it's the other companion. Is she Australian? I think I said it's an Australian accent. Yeah, she's Australian, yeah. So she works cool? as a flight attendant. Um, and yeah, she's wow. Australian. See, where's the, um, where's the, where's the Australian companion these days? Like, we need to, <laughs> there's, there's a line in the episode where she's like, she's talking about Earth. And she's like, I live there. And I was expecting to be like, I live on, I live there right next to Bondi Beach. Just something like that. I was like, where's, yeah. the, where's the Australian, where's the state shout out? Where's she from? Um, we need we need more Australian companions. Russell T Davis, listen to us. Cast <laughs> yeah, Australian. She, um, she makes a lot of um, references throughout the time her time on the show, and they're always like the most stereotypical Australian saying references. But it's still fun. It's still cool. Um, so both of them you liked. They weren't really in it enough to kind of get gauge an opinion from. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, pretty much. Um, they kind of just like. Yeah, they kind of say it. like one just stays in the TARDIS. Well, I think they both stay in the TARDIS or something. Um, but yeah, and it's like kind of just like thrown in there. Um, I think the episode had a lot to do. I feel like it could be probably utilized um, the first and second part a bit better mm-hmm. and maybe utilize the companions a bit. But I feel like what, um, you know, the first, uh, first episode we watched in the, in the classic rewatch, um, I feel like they use like Joe Grant really well, considering it was a really and the brig was there as well. And you were talking about that lieutenant character as well. I mm-hmm. thought they used all those characters really well. Um, but like you said, there was a lot to juggle here. There was like, all those soldiers as well, and I, yeah. I, just, I couldn't keep up with it all. And and I felt like the companions got a little bit, um, just a little bit, got cast in the shadows a little bit. If they didn't do that, I feel like they could have had more time with them. But Obviously, Adric was the centric, like you keep saying, like it is an Adric centric episode. So yeah. I do kind of get it. Yeah, um, yeah. There's a lot of supporting cast. Uh, um, they were all like sort of just fine. Um, and but there was probably too many that it did take away from, there was from the companions. You know, um, the the ginger lady on the ship. I thought she was good. Um, and the the main general guy with the mustache was good as well. Um, but yeah. Yeah, and then they go and introduce all these. Um, they go and fly to that ship where the um, 
where the, the drones down in the cave, they track where they came from. Mm-hmm. And they go to shoot and they introduce more characters. And I was like, holy fuck. Yeah. Like, there's so many. Like, there's a time where a guy comes in with a gun. He's like, I'm I'm relieving you if you're a, of your status as captain. And I was like, who the fuck is this guy? Like, I literally <laughs> have no idea. Like, I'm just like, it's so much to just take in. And it's yeah. such different storytelling to what I'm used to. Um, so please don't behead me, everybody. Um, <laughs> I, I, I am trying my best. You've got to go into these episodes with a certain type of mind, I feel like, and remember that they are old and... Totally. And that this shit used to scare the hippie jibbies out of people. What did you think of the morph suit androids? <laughs> Great. They reminded me of these. Um, I can't. I keep forgetting the movie, which I was going to bring up. Isn't it like the man who fell to Earth or something like that? Or the, the aliens who came to Earth or something? They're like these. They look very similar to that. And no that's idea. all I could think about. But I thought that I thought that they were really cool design. Yeah, they they were pretty cool. Um. They're just and like then, walking around shooting lasers and shit. It's pretty cool. Yeah, they're the, the Cyberman's little minions. So speaking of which, the Cyberman, 80s Cyberman. Um, I think they are, they're kind of cool. Um, I'm nostalgic for them, but I definitely don't think they're as good as like uh, the older, 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 like Mondasian ones that, you know, were involved enough in time and stuff like that. Um, and right. these fuckers are so skinny. Them in them alfoil suits are literally like skinnier than David Tennant, and that's skinny. Yeah, um, it was kind of it was kind of weird and often in the sense where like I'm so used to Cybermen being like so bulky and loud. Yeah, um, like these these characters, sorry, these Cybermen, they literally were like they were so human in the sense that I don't know if it was just like a budget thing or it's just like that's what it was kind of like back in the day, but like they literally moved just like humans with yeah. like you're right with the alpha on and i don't know if it's meant to be still and it's just like the budget wise i think the design um, is very 80s i think that's that's the not necessarily the oh problem boy. but i think that's why they look they're just like shiny 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 things <laughs> yeah and even with the even with the the main captain leader side man like yeah it's like you can see a a, a, a mouth moving the bottom of a mouth and a chin moving and it's like it's painted silver and i'm kind of convinced that they were going for the idea of it being a piece of metal going up and down but i, I don't think it was like chin. that i don't think Sorry. that was the point i don't think it was meant to be like that but... <laughs> i swear i think that's what they were going for i think yeah. they were it's kind of cool saying. how um they've got like the black handlebars for the leader and then that carries over on into new who though yeah hey? i remember you um i remember you saying that and i, I picked up on that uh they they carry guns, which was also different from what we used to. Uh, does the, the the like the hand shot doesn't come in until Russell? Is that right? Or what's that? The handgun thing? No, that like where the the hand the touch with the uh, shot. Yeah, I don't think that's a. I don't. I, I've not seen all. I've not actually seen many Cybermen stories in Classic Who. Um, okay. And and I don't think that's the thing in any of the ones I've seen, but it, it might be in, in in other ones. Um, right. Yeah, but they do so do a lot of like guns. strangly, strangle stuff. Um, right. Yeah, they do seem quite like, yeah, like kind of like grab and strangle. Um, yeah. But I thought they were a really cool presence. It was interesting that they didn't, um, they didn't get introduced in the first. Well, they get, they get, they get one little scene in the, at the end of the first part when they're mm. like, they can see through the drones that it's the doctor. Um, but the doctor doesn't, from memory, the doctor doesn't actually see it's a Cyberman until part three. Yeah. Yeah. Late in part yeah. three. Which um, actually surprised me because I thought that I thought they meet at the end of the first part, but that didn't mm. happen. But yeah, it was interesting that um, we got to see the doctor react to the Cyberman after not seeing them for so long. I felt that weight of him not seeing them for for as long as it had been. I think since Tom Baker's story, I think mean, you were mm. saying that was that was really cool. Even the yeah. whole gold thing. I know it's a few references to modern Who with the whole gold thing. Um, there's mm-hmm. a character who said, um, "said what are they?" And the doctor said, "They're Cybermen." And that's, I believe, that's done in um, Army of Ghosts when Jackie says to the doctor, "What are they?" And he says, "Cybermen." I think that was a a power to that. And also, we read this a few weeks ago when we did the Nightmare and Silver review at the end of part three. The Cybermen all march towards the camera, and that shot is is made again, is done again in. Um, in Nightmare and Silver, so I noticed that. So I picked up on a few things as well. Yeah. The gold definitely yeets out Cybermen at the end, that Cyber Leader. 
Yeah, he gets Hadrick's Hadrick's low star. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, last thing for me from the side, man. I think there were um pretty yeah, pretty strong presence in the episode. Um, I just the the costume design, I don't like the Alpha stuff, but I really like the helmet. I like the face. It's like so lifeless and stuff and really iconic, I think. And they brought them back yeah. as well. So what was that? They bought well, they brought them back for um Jody's era that's similar style with the Yeah, face. well to be honest, all of the new Who Cybermen heads are kind of based off of that, you know. Um but but yeah, the the Jody ones are very they're much more similar to it. Yeah. 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 Um so I think they were very, very good. Um yeah, they are really cool. Overall, I think the the direction was was pretty decent from Peter Grimwade, who's directed quite a few classic stories. Um and I think the um, the script came together from uh, Eric Eric Sawald. I think it was whilst maybe a little bit menindoing menindo some fucking word. You know what I mean? Like it it, it dawdles a little bit in a few parts. Uh, I think it was still a pretty solid script. Yeah, I think um, I definitely think people uh, might have some rose colored glasses on in the sense that like the whole Adric death thing, I'm sure was very big back in the day. And mm-hmm. I think the storyline is cool, and the whole part at the end with the with it actually being the reason why the dinosaurs are extinct is a really cool um, resolution mm-hmm. to the story. Um, I do think um, I do think I was like, okay, this is it, and that's kind of like it. Although the death of Adric is really cool, I was, I think, a bit, um, I think, expecting a little bit more. But I did still really enjoy it. It's just like, after hearing so much about it for literally years now, yeah, it was almost kind of like you know you, you do kind of get this idea in your head what it's going to be like, and it kind of just was what it was. Although quite enjoyable, I was a bit like, okay, is that kind of like it? But still, still, still enjoyable. And the last, the last part is, is especially I found really enjoyable, and the whole Adric thing was was great, and the whole dinosaur thing was, and it is it is like a like you said it, with the the silence in the credits it's like what it ended like that's really cool how they did that super impactful hey yeah really and it just it, it just has the steel of the um of adric's little star yeah that was used to destroy that side man the cyber leader yeah yeah adric's noble sacrifice of his star um yeah i'm pretty mad uh so we move on to some some segments shall we sure let's do it let's do it uh, do you oh, have any goofs this week my Sorry? Did you have any goofs this week? Yeah. Okay. Well, let's do it. Because I don't really have any big enough goofs to do it. But let's do Goof of the Week. So Goof of the Week is a segment where we talk about the silly production errors, silly little goofs, little things like that uh, yeah. that happen. Um, Kazaku, we're a little bit kinder to it because obviously the production values, the time restraints, everything that they're on at a time means that there's a lot of wobbly sets and stuff like that. Um, but sometimes if stuff is real funny, we'll talk about them. I've got nothing this week. Connor, what have you got? Well, now you said that, I sound a bit mean, but I'm gonna um I'm not gonna give it too much shit. But uh so I'm not gonna say this about the Simon. When the Simon are coming out of their tombs, they're clearly just coming through like a bit of cardboard, a bit of paper. Yeah. Which is fine, because I'll let that slide. Um, which I really respect by the way, because there's multiple shots of Cybermen coming through and I'm like, hey, you know what? I respect it. Mm-hmm. But there is one I one I did find funny because we spoke about a wall, a wall last week. But there is a scene where the Cybermen start to melt this like steel wall, and a Cyberman like comes through it, and then suddenly all these other Cybermen come through it. And if it's like a steel wall, like the Cybermen's heads are like going across, and you can just see it's cardboard because it like flips yeah. back and then it flips back and it flips, and it's like meant to be a steel wall. Which even if it has melted, it would just like it would freeze again. Mm. Um, but it's just all about the walls. You've got to bring up the walls here and they there. Got what, so. There's a reference to it in the Five-ish Doctors. That's the that's the big thing. Yes, uh, I'm, sure, I'm sure. Um, yes, yes, <laughs> it's, it's great though. It's it's all the sets were lovely. So I can't yeah. I can't give them shit. I really can't. The sets were really good. I in particular really liked where all the silos were. I thought they were reminded me of Darklight, that laser tag place in in down in uh, Junalop. We don't live near Junalop. I can say the name of the suburb. You can um, say it. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, and um, I mean, man, which is like, oh, yeah. well, I know you used to <laughs> yeah, in the I early episodes you used to give me shit because I used to like reference like very local places to us and shit. Um, no, that's fine, you can say that. I'll let that slide. And I liked that there was some great model work of like really big wide shots of the of the silo place as well. Um, yes. Did you notice that? That was really good. Yes. Yeah. All the stuff was awesome, and I like you. I really liked the cave stuff. Thought that was mm-hmm. really sick. Yeah, cave stuff was cool. Yeah. Um, 
Cool. All right. Well, let's move on to Australia's second favorite segment. I think it's time that we talk about a little bit of trivia, a little bit of behind the scenes knowledge, behind the scenes facts. It's time for behind the scenes. All right. Love it. Bitches. Uh, so yeah, we talk about behind the scenes here. Um, if you didn't get that. Um, and, and we streamline it a little bit with Classic Who because there are so many facts out there. So here's a big thing that was really cool. And you do get it a lot more in New Who these days, but not to this extent. Like um, usually there's leaks and stuff in, in New Who. But I guess because this was an entirely studio bound episode, they got away with it. So um, last time Cybermen were in was 1975, seven years later, still no sign of the Cybermen. Um, and they didn't promote Cybermen in it. So in that final shot of the first episode, when the Cybermen are there, that was a surprise to the world. No one knew the Cybermen were coming back. Even Radio Times, they were like, oh, do you want us to put a Cybermen on the front cover? And they were like, no, no we don't want that publicity. We don't want that. Cybermen, big secret. Wow. Okay, that's really cool. That I really cool. love that. Kind of makes that. That's so it's like cool. the first Cybermen story in seven years and they get such a big surprising comeback and makes the ending of part one a little bit cooler, I think. Oh, man, we need, we need, we need more of that shit. Like, yeah, these totally. days. Um, speaking of the radio times, um, basically, Adric obviously dies in this, and then there's one more story, time flight, which Adric is in for the season. Um, so this part four was supposed to come out the day that the radio times for the following week was about to come out, um, and that radio times um, thing. So people would see the radio times in the morning, they'd read it, and then they'd watch the episode, and they would have seen that Adric wasn't credited in time flight for the upcoming weeks on. So what they did was there is the smallest Adric cameo in time flight. It's just like a hologram from memory or, or something like that. Um, and so they did that. So that way they still gave Adric the credit, credit for time flight um, to keep his death a big secret. Wow. This is, this is cool. a really cool uh, behind the scenes shit. I love yeah, stuff John like Nathan that. Turner, he's a, he's a pretty solid producer, showrunner kind of thing. He's a solid. Yeah, wow. Uh, towards the end in the TARDIS, when a Cyberman shoots the console, Tegan screams, ah! And um, that scream was actually real because she gets shot by a piece of um, uh, uh, some sparks that come off the TARDIS, hit her hand. Um, and so it makes a scream. So it's a. Uh... I, I, I thought I heard a big scream. Yeah. So it's kind of funny. Um, the end credits with, with no music for part four were inspired by a Coronation Street episode where a character died and that happened in it. So, Some um, good old Corey. Yeah. Matthew Waterhouse, who plays Adric, um, he describes his last day by saying um, he was filled with champagne, put into a taxi, and cried. <laughs> <laughs> for Matthew Waterhouse. Wow. What a boy. Uh, and last little fact for us is the android costumes were later painted silver and used again in the Five Doctors as the Raston Warrior robots. Um, so that's... That's quite cool. That's a little, little fact for you there. Um, yeah, that's everything over on behind the scenes. Um, can I quickly say something? Um, yeah. Worst cliffhanger so far of the um, of of me watching Classic Who mm -hmm. is the episode two cliffhanger, where basically one of these people just comes up to the Doctor and Adric, and it's like <laughs> it's like we shoot suspect it's like that. it's like we it was like it was like we shoot suspects and then it ends and then it just like it the, the episode three starts and then the doctor's just like well we're not and then they just start walking <laughs> I know. Again. it's the cliffhanger is like okay it's the resolution that makes it a little bit more like yeah oh that that really wasn't much like, was it you know we didn't do it and they're like with us and they just walk out the room so funny <laughs> yeah sorry god all right let's talk about what you guys want to say about the episode um, over on Twitter and Instagram, it's time for Australia's third favorite segment. It's just Twitter teams. All right, so over on Twitter um, and Instagram, you can talk to us and we ask for your reviews every week. Uh, this week over on Twitter, I said, see ya, Adric. Earthshock, have you seen it? Write your thoughts in the classic on, on this classic story in the comments below. We'll read them on the show. Uh, we got one response here from Dylan. He says, is it bad to say that I found this story kind of boring and that the only thing that really stood out to me was the Cybermen cliffhanger and the, at the end of episode one and the 
the silent credits at the end of the story. That's a bit of Dylan action for you. And he says, we should have done the Caves of Androzani. Mm. Mm. What have you got over uh, on the Instagram? Yes, of course. Okay. All right. So let's go over to Instagram. Hit us with it. We like a chat over there on the socials. So um, come on. We love it. Come at us. Have a giggle. Have a geese. Good shit. I, I feel like up. I had another topic to talk about on this episode, like another random topic, but I, I really can't remember what it was. Like, oh, this man, is why I, I should write this stuff down. Oh, yeah. Oh, God, you're telling me I literally was about to make notes before we um we start recording. And you'll you'll find out why I'm gonna I should start doing that more in a second. But <laughs> I put do you like Earthshot? We got a hundred percent on Instagram. People wow. clearly like it. Um I said um leave us some thoughts about Earthshot. Got a uh, bit of a shock. And then we also got I feel really bad for this, but also it's actually not my fault. Um for once. Um, so Shane sent me a review for last week's episode, See of Death, which I will read. Okay. Um, but he said, not posting a review as you forgot to read mine out last week. <laughs> Peace and love. <laughs> so I DM'd him and I said, um, I said, no, because I literally left Aiden's house last week and I was driving home and I saw it pop up. Um, so he uh. literally just missed out. And, and Jacob's done that a few times too. So if you're listening, Shane, please forgive me. It, it really actually wasn't my fault. I know I've forgotten your reviews like twice. My bad. Um, <laughs> I am really sorry. But I will read out your review for City of Death right now. So City of Death. Another great story. Costumes effects. This, uh, sorry, costume effects. This series has been great. Lots of pass in this. Maybe overdone. Fun fact. Tom Baker and Lala Ward really became a couple during this. So yeah, Aiden, you said that during the episode, mm, um, yeah. which is an interesting fact. Silly and also, look. I want to quickly I want to quickly read out, uh, someone commented on our City of Death review about Romana's hat, which I thought was pretty interesting. Yes. Yeah. So, so we reviewed City of Death last week, so that's what this is all about. Yeah, City of Death. Um, he's, uh, he or she, I do not know, said Romana's hat stays put because it's secured by hat pins, long needles, you poke through the hat so it's uh, anchored in place by the hair. By the way, the school uniform was Lana Ward, uh, La, 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 La Ward, sorry, suggestion to the costume designer. Lada hated wearing her uniform when she was at school, but thought she would be a good inspiration for girl fans when she saw Romana wearing one. She only later realized that some boys and some dads might be inspired in a different way. So, <laughs> thank you, Kate. Well, there we so, go. Yeah, that's, my... that's the two big questions from, from last week's review answered. How was the hat staying in put? And yes. why was Laurel Award dressed as a schoolgirl? There you go. So it always comes in in a nick of time after we finish recording. So my apologies, um, mm-hmm. Shane. It, is really, it really sucks when we get, I get reviews um, straight after we finish recording, but I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I, I did mess, I did DM him just before, twice, saying, um, saying sorry, I will do it on this week's show. And I was like, we're about to go on there if you want to send in your Airshot review. But um, he hasn't gone back to me yet. So sorry. It actually wasn't my fault this time. Me? Such a dick. Bruh. Okay. That's Bruh. it. Sorry. I'm all, <laughs> I'm, all out of, uh, I'm all out of ideas with um, this. Uh, I'm all out of ideas of who the fucking, who the 14th Doctor is. Yeah, I don't give a fuck. Just tell everything. us. Yeah. For fuck's sake. Oh, we have basically got confirmation that it's an Easter special. Yeah, for Jody's next story. Who would have yeah. known? Oh my god! Oh my what god! What great news! Yeah, there was a, some at Gallifrey one. Some stuff was mentioned and and things. So so that's pretty cool. Easter special. Um, quite soon actually. Yeah. Also, a bit of information that's come out was that um the Doctor and Yaz's relationship wasn't planned. I don't really have an opinion on that, but that's just a. It was or it wasn't. It wasn't. Um. That doesn't oh, I mean did, like I didn't, I didn't know that at all, it, they've not been working on it for a while or something. It just means that by in series eleven it wasn't planned. You know, I feel like in series twelve it was because there is like you know that little reference in haunting of Villa Diodati about it and stuff. So mm. I don't know. Yeah. Oh man, like yeah, I, I didn't really surprise me. And also, it's like it's like I don't, I really don't care if you're gonna do it. That's that's great. Go ahead, do it. But it's also like um, if you're gonna do something like that why not plan it like why just throw it in it just feels it just feels rushed and it's like i don't know let's hope it ends in a good way i don't know yeah. let's just see how it ends i guess it's kind of hard to judge it when we don't know how it's, it's we've got two episodes left so we don't know if it's gonna 
wrap up nicely. Yeah. They might have just had a bit of a shaky start. But um, yeah, it, does just, it just feels tacked on. Here's something else that's kind of interesting about that that I read like a week or so ago is that mm. apparently about a week um, ago. Matt <laughs> about a week ago, Matt Stevens, who's uh, one of the uh, executive producers along with Chibnall, um, yeah. recently said that apparently when they were doing um, the centenary special, they didn't know if Doctor Who was continuing. So wow. like they had been renewed they only found out about Russell coming back the day before it was announced. And that was the first thing they'd heard sort of about it continuing. So they were doing all the centenary and they're like, we don't know how the fuck this is going to end. So this whole concept of possibly having like a different star regeneration, maybe it's open-ended or just something a bit different yeah. um, is, is quite likely because I yeah. guess it was written to possibly be the last story for a while of who. Wow. That's, that's whack. So they didn't know if it was renewed or not. No, yeah, they, they had no idea. What? That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, I'm certainly interested. I, I, I sent something in our group chat the other day as well, where basically it was saying that the original plan was to end on the Sea Devils episode, which I just think is, is bizarre. But, yeah, but I don't think it would have been the Sea Devils episode that we're getting. You know, like, I think it would have been a bit more. Yeah, true. Like it it yeah. would have been a different episode yeah. uh, altogether. Okay. Because the other thing to note is that um eve of the daleks was written in i think two weeks so th- yeah. this, this yeah. is what i mean where you know we were at, at first we were told season 13 is going to be eight episodes and then all of a sudden it was um six episodes and two specials then six episodes and three specials like the the show was constantly kind of um evolving and i assume it's because of covid like i, I don't think that um this format been. is a is a big thing of it being run poorly i think because of covid sometimes it was like oh we can't do that plan Let's quickly come up with another plan that we're going to have to do. Um, oh, yeah, man! Like God knows, like how difficult it would have been. Like it would have been hell. Like you can't, mm-hmm. you can't blame for it. And honestly, I think it's the best thing that's happened to the show in a while. I, I've, I've loved, I love Fox, and I really like even the Daleks, and I really hope I like this next two. Yeah. Um, so I think they really did take the whole obstacles or opportunities type route. And um, despite how you feel about Chibnall's era. You gotta give the man props to the fact that he pulled off a fucking a season during COVID, which is which is nuts. Totally. And it was during the height of the pandemic. Like, yeah, they were like one of the first productions to to go into production yeah. whilst whilst the whilst COVID was happening. It was very early on they started shooting it. Um, it's so really cute. That, them. It's really cute that um was it um was it Chibnall who said that children need to know the doctor's still around right now? Like that was really sweet. Yeah, I think he said like um yeah, like uh, we people need Doctor Who in 2021, and like or something. Man, like they that, do. Isn't? Like, fuck, oh, they we do. Yeah, the world know what is else... so messed up at the moment. We need Doctor Who. You know, like we totally we need it. You know what else really is um, something that doesn't get enough thought? I think, um, but making Flux, the whole crew was in a bubble. So for like the like months and months of shooting, maybe there was an exception here or there if there was like they had a week off or something, but. Mm. These people, like their bubble was the crew. So they didn't see their family and stuff like that. You know, that yeah. they weren't in, in their bubbles. And I'm sure a lot of people didn't see a lot of their family members during COVID. But these guys were doing it for, they were off shooting in, in Cardiff. Golf work. And, and, you know, they, yeah, taking big risks in, in doing what they were doing, you know. Um, so I think, yeah, that, that, that needs a bit of praise. Oh, 100%. I think, and also the best thing about it is like, I get a bit scared now watching this season that was shot in COVID. Not like respect the other one who did it, but sometimes I think you can tell, um, you know, it had issues just because it was shot in a, in a pandemic. Mm-hmm. But I really didn't, honestly, I really didn't notice um, any difference. Yeah. No, if anything, it's just um, a lot more green screen work, well. I think, is, is the big difference. But what, what can you do? Yeah. You know, you can take, you take that over it, not. You know, over it not airing like even like this. Um, we've got a new season of uh, Better Call Soul coming out in April. Yeah, I know we're all ecstatic for. April and that 19. was all shot. That was all shot shot in in COVID. That'll be the first. Um, anything Breaking Bad wise, Better Call Soul wise, that'll be the first. I remember when I remember when season five of Better Call Soul started airing, which was the last season. It was. Um, oh my god, that was it's actually two years ago today because I got a Snapchat memory about it. Oh really. Huh. 
So this was just, I remember watching season five of The Vertical Soul, and that's just when everything with COVID was starting to, starting to go yeah, mad. Yeah, wow. And the whole world started to shut down. Um, so that's always a bit of a nostalgic show in that sense, where I'm just like, oh my God, I remember when this fucking happened. Mm. But um, yeah, it, um, I wonder when um, Russell goes to shoot, how different the COVID rules and stuff will be, because he's going to start shooting in what, September? I think. April. Right. Well, that's the, April. It's the big rumor. It's April. not been confirmed, but it's like, heavily likely that they're shooting like april april may i think um and so we're literally like any what? day now do a doctor announcement honestly no and our luck will happen tomorrow or something like yeah it'll happen as soon <laughs> as we hang up this call I, <laughs> yeah exactly that's not so like why are they shooting so um why are they shooting so like it's not that is it just for the same so is it just for the anniversary is it the anniversary and then the season because why would they shoot a season when it's just like so far away because the episode's over a year away from coming out like, is it looking like heaps of vfx work or is that the issue or what i reckon think? it'll be a bit of like uh having a lot of vfx work i think things maybe take a little bit longer because of covid that being said i think the uk is done with covid restrictions now um hmm. but also like it makes me think that we're either going to get a a series before the anniversary or we're going to get like an anniversary series um you know what i mean Bro, like, get like a five-parter or something in going through october november get out of here with that shit mm-hmm. that shit will be yes. dope they're exciting me man well yeah you're right we'll have to find out at some point i feel like it's getting ridiculous now like people are really just they're just digging into the barrel now and it's like all right enough enough yeah just just Say who it is. Just fucking right, tell me. On. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah, I feel okay. that. Okay, Connor, Earthshock, what would you rate it out of 10? Seven. Now, wow. That was blunt to the point. I like it. Um, yeah, well, you know, I heard so much about it. I definitely enjoyed the last episodes more, which was City of Death and the Three Doctors, if you haven't tuned into those ones. Yeah. Um, Three Doctors is definitely by far my favorite we've watched. And um, I think this just had the issue of... Um, being overhyped which again i'm sure if you're a huge fan of episodes it wasn't overhyped for you because you, you know you just probably watched it live or grew up watching it as a kid and that's completely fine i really have not offend anyone by saying that but yeah just just good in my opinion good a good episode a good not great yeah sweet um i'm a little bit more i think i enjoyed it a little bit more than you but i still think it's probably not the greatest story of all time it's got one of the best endings to a classic story the way they're cross-cutting between everything and it all comes together is super nice it's um, great ending, yeah. uh, this is getting a 7.25 from me not quite a 7.5 because that's what i gave the three doctors but it wasn't quite a seven it still was a bit a bit more above a seven so okay. 7.25 very in-depth rating system we got here yeah that's interesting okay so yeah we got um survival next week tv movie I keep forgetting we're doing we're also doing um we're also doing Adventure in Space and Time and the Three Doctors. Yeah. And then we've got the 50th. Yeah, which will be our one hundredth episode of the podcast. So that's why we're doing these classic episodes to try and one, boost us up so day can be our our hundredth episode rather than our ninety-fourth episode. Um (laughs) and two, it'll be cool for Connor going into day, seeing a bit of classic who and for us to just shake up the content we're making and and talk about classic who a little bit. So yeah, so that'd be cool. That is yeah, awesome. Um, so survival, we are right. um, basically that's the story we're doing next week. It's a Sylvester McCoy story with Ace, great companion duo from a pretty solid season, in my opinion. Oh, um, I love Ace. If you guys haven't seen it, I recommend watching the episode before you come and listen to us. Um, maybe that's your gateway into Classic Who or your gateway into Sylvester McCoy's Doctor watching Survival. Um, it's only three parts. It's short, it's sweet, and it closes out the entire T of Classic Who unintentionally. Like they, yeah, it wasn't made to be the final story, but in a way, it works. It kind of yeah. works for it. The writer came back and did um, Ears of the Light. And see yeah. The oh, that's what I was going to say is um, <laughs> I got the Series 10 soundtrack on my phone now, which is great. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so, sorry, I just switched over my internet then, so I might have lagged out for a second there. 
oh okay sorry in when when you said it it sounded like you didn't want to say how you got it and i was like you gonna say how <laughs> no so um basically i downloaded um the on youtube i think it's called spider dalek or spider man was so you just type up on youtube the um doctor who series 10 soundtrack and there'll be a 55 minute um just recreation of a whole bunch of the series 10 score because series 10 hasn't been released um by the bbc or silver screen Madness. and um i think it's because of murray because he's a busy guy um and uh, and so basically i downloaded that 55 minute cut um turned it into an mp3 um and then cut up songs out of it chose names for the songs myself did stuff like that download the software so that i could could attach um uh like artists to it so they all had the credit for murray gold um and then also i attached the the artwork to it and then i sent them onto a google drive downloaded that from a google drive onto my phone um and then opened up local files on spotify and made a playlist called series 10 soundtrack and imported all of those songs onto my spotify so now I have the series 10 soundtrack up on Spotify. So you guys can do that as well if you like. Um, what quarantine does to you, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, that literally was it. It was something I've been kind of wanting to do for a while. And then it was late at night one night and I'd had a coffee late in the day. So I had so much energy and I was like, what am I? Let's just do it. Fuck it. <laughs> I love it. Um, yeah, you can do that. Yeah, you, you sent me all the stuff. So I might, I might do it. Um, yeah. Uh, quickly, um, so we can we next i made a massive this is the thing this is this is like murphy's law i made such a big deal last week about us filming together and how i'm going <laughs> to make a commitment and it's not obviously anyone's fault um and then the next week this happens yeah um but if all goes to plan does that mean we can film in person next week yes awesome okay so there will be an in-person episode which i know you all really enjoy a lot more than these but this was just for the safety of your boy. If there is a newborn in the house, everyone, for me, I cannot get sick, okay? <laughs> so Aiden did the right thing. Don't get mad. Second yeah. of all, we are watching the survival and then the TV movie. It's the first time on our classic rewatch that we are watching episodes in order. Oh, that's true, because it's survival and the TV movie. Yeah, that's true. That's very true. Let's go. We are Let's watching them bread. in order. You! Yeah. Um, I'm really keen to watch the movie as well and survival. So yeah, great couple of weeks coming up, ladies and gentlemen. You heard it here first. That's right, folks. Shall we close out the show, Connor? Episode 96 of the show. 96. <laughs> you lagged like Let's crazy go. when you said that. So it's that's great. That's um, the perfect reference for you. <laughs> okay. All right, ready? Sing, baby, sing. Sing to me, Dad. Oh, and Connor's and podcast. We're doing we Doctor Who reviews. In Internet's gone so bad so quickly. Doctor Who reviews. Doctor Who's reviews. Doctor Who. Messed up us recording together. Bloody COVID. Bit of that, you naff piece of shit. <laughs> See you next time, folks. Goodbye.